This is depicting of the Father's heart towards us when we're wayward. I want to take you right there so you can walk with that boy. Feel what he felt. And then turn around and look at the bigness of the Father's heart. The boy in the story represents any one of us who either never knew the Father's love or slipped back away from the Father's heart. The Father in the story is not God, was an earthly dad who portrayed the Father's heart. He showed us what the Father's heart's like by, by how he lived and the choices he made and how he behaved towards his son. The first thing we see is the son. Something's going on in his heart. Somehow, he doesn't see that at home everything's good. He doesn't see that my dad has provided for me. Great place to live, food, joy, and a good home. But he longs to go and do what he sees. Other people doing that seems from a distance, it seems so fulfilling and satisfying. The land of sin, when you stay in the courts of God and you look there, it looks like everybody is having lots of fun until you go over there. So something happens in the boy's heart and keeps distancing him more and more from his father, from his family, from his faith. And one day he comes and does something that's unthinkable in Jewish culture to go to your father and say, Father, give me the portion of the estate that belongs to me. Unthinkable because you never tell that or ask your father for inheritance. When he's on his deathbed, he calls his children to his side and then dispenses the inheritance. The fact that this younger boy came to his dad while his dad was healthy and invited that kind of conversation suggests then he was saying, Dad, I wish you were dead. I read some of the historical narratives of people in Eastern society when that happened. One medical doctor, when his son approached him and said, give him my portion of the inheritance, the next day the father died. Nothing was wrong with him medically. He just died because he was so heartbroken from his son daring to even say that to him. Jesus is speaking to this broad audience. In the audience were some religious people. In the audience were some sinners that were wayward. In the audience were some backsliders. In the audience were people that had no concept as to what God really wants. And he's talking. And as that's going on, he tells this story about this wayward son. And the son comes to the dad and says, Dad, give me my portion what belongs to me. The dad gives it to him. But he's, the son does not have the right to dispose of that property. He has authority over the property, but not that full authority. He presses his father further. Give me full authority. Father releases him. And the son sells off a parcel of that land. And even then we see the bigness of the father's heart, not forcing the son to stay. Not trying to be controlling with his son, though he loved him. The son departs. And then he disconnects himself from his family, his father, his faith. And the Bible says he goes into a distant country. No connection. No you know, reciprocity of, hey, how are you doing, son? Hey, I'm doing great, family. None of that. And he now is the big man, so to speak, on campus. He's the guy in the bar that says, drinks for everybody, it's on me. And he squanders his money, the Bible says, in wild living party every day, every night. Verse 30 tells us he went prostitutes, he's spending his money left and right. All kinds of sexual escapades. And while he's there in this disconnected state, something happens. He loses all of his money and then famine hits that land. It gets even worse. 
Here he is, a foreigner, broke, and you know what he does? The unthinkable for a Jewish boy. The only job he can find was working for a farmer who sends him into the fields to feed his pigs. Can you imagine? A Jewish boy, who we're told based on the book of Leviticus, if you touch pigs or swine, it makes you unclean. It disconnects you from your devotion. You can't keep the Sabbath. And so his faith now is shattered because he's constantly in that state of uncleanness. And he's feeding pigs. And as he's there in the squalor, you know, you see how blinding sin is? Sin blinds. There's some of us in this room right now. There's a mess that took place in your life. Sin blinds. Sin, it makes you think that light is dark and dark is light and good is bad and bad is good. It, it just confuses the mind. And somehow it makes you think that that bad thing, oh, that'll never happen to me. I'll get away with it. But the scripture is true. Be sure your sins will find you out.